Hello and welcome to Career Ride. I am Nishant and once again I am here with a new topic. And my today's topic is data structure interview questions and answers for freshers. So without wasting time, let's get started now. First one is what do you mean by data structure? And the data structure is a way to store and organize data in the main memory so that the data can be accessed and modified in an efficient way. Data structures are classified into two categories. And the first one is linear data structure and nonlinear data structure. In a linear data structure, the data item or elements are arranged in a linear fashion, meaning they are arranged in a sequential manner. And each element is connected to the element in front of it and to the element behind it. The example of linear data structures are array, queue, stack, linked list. In the nonlinear data structure, the data items or elements are not arranged in a sequential manner. And the examples of nonlinear data structure are trees, graph. Now coming to the next one, what is an array? Array is a collection of data items that are of same type. It is a linear data structure and its data items are stored sequentially in the memory. Arrays are also static in nature since they are always fixed in size. Now let's have an example over here. And in this example there is an array of size 5 and that stores integer numbers only which are 2, 3, 7, 8 and 6. And the numbers above them are called index, which are the location of the data items in an array. So if we want to access the integer 8, we must specify the index 3. And this will retrieve the data item that is present in the index 3, which is 8. Now the next question is, what is a multidimensional array? A multidimensional array is also known as array of arrays, meaning we can store many arrays inside an array. Now 2D array or 2-dimensional array and 3D array or 3-dimensional array are considered as multidimensional arrays. Now let us try to understand 2D array. 2D array is a collection of 1D arrays and store data in a tabular format and it can be represented as array name number of rows number of columns. Let's have an example of 2D array. And this array will have 4 rows and 3 columns. Now let's try to understand 3D arrays. 3D arrays are a collection of 2D arrays. Or we could say it is a collection of multiple tables. And it can be represented as array name number of blocks, number of rows and number of columns where number of blocks specify the number of 2D array. Now the next one is, what is a linked list? A linked list is a linear data structure and it consists of a group of nodes where each node contains a data field to store data and an address field to store address of the next node which is also known as a pointer and this forms a chain like structure. So in the example we can see the first node of a linked list is referred to as head and the last node is referred to as a tail and points to null value. A linked list is also a dynamic in nature which means it doesn't have a fixed size and can shrink or grow in size according to the requirements. Now the next question is, what are the advantages of linked list over array? The advantages of linked list over an array are, linked list is dynamic in nature, unlike an array which is static. A linked list doesn't have a fixed size and can grow or shrink in size as per requirement. Since a linked list is dynamic in nature, there is no memory wastage. Now insertion or deletion in a linked list is quite easy as compared to an array. For example, when we want to insert an element 3 in an array that is sorted such as 2, 4, 6, 7, all elements to the right of 2 will have to move one place to the right. Whereas in linked list, there is no need to move any nodes. 
only the address needs to be updated in the required pointers. Now the next question is what is a doubly linked list? What are its advantages over singly linked list? As we already know a linked list contains a data field and a pointer to the next node. But in doubly linked list there is an extra pointer on every node which points to the previous node. Now the advantages of a singly linked list are a doubly linked list can be traversed in both directions. It is more efficient compared to a singly linked list since it can be traversed in both directions. Deletion operation is faster in doubly linked list. In a singly linked list to delete a given node, traversing through the list is required. Till it reaches the previous node pointing to the node we want to delete. Whereas in doubly linked list there is no need to traverse through the list since it has both previous and the next pointer. Now the next question is what are the applications of a linked list and some of the common applications of the linked list are linked list are used for implementation of stacks and queues. Linked list are also used for maintaining the directory names in an operating system. Linked list are also used in image viewer software to navigate through the image using the next and previous button. And similarly, they are also used in music players. Now let us understand what is a stack, what are the applications of a stack. A stack is a linear data structure that follows a particular order known as LIFO, that is last in first out, where the last element that was inserted will be the first one to be removed. In a stack, insertion and deletion operation are done only from the top of the stack. A stack can be implemented using arrays and linked list. Now the most common applications of a stack are the first one is reverse a string and second is visited URLs are stored in stack. In reverse a string, the letters of a word are stored in a stack with the front letter going at the bottom of the stack and because of the LIFO principle the topmost letter is first extracted and we get the letters in the reverse order. Now the second one is visited URLs are stored in a stack. The URL of all the pages of the website that you have visited are stored in a stack and when we press the back button they are then fetched from the stack one by one. Now the next one is what are the basic operations performed on a stack and the basic operations performed on a stack are push, pop, is empty, is full, peak. Now let us try to understand each of them. Push operation. Push operation is done to add an element to the top of the stack. Pop. The pop operation is done to remove an element from the top of the stack. Is empty. Is empty operation is done to check if the stack is empty. Is full. Is full operation is done to check if the stack is full. Peak. Peak operation returns the value of the topmost element of the stack without removing it. Alright, so coming to the next one. What is a queue? A queue is linear data structure that follows a particular order known as FIFO, that is first in, first out, where the first element that was inserted will be the first one to be removed. In a queue, the insertion is done at the rear end, whereas the deletion is done at the front end. Now the next question is, what are the basic operations of a queue? And the basic operations of the queue are NQ, DQ, is empty, front, rare. Now let us try to understand each of them briefly. NQ. NQ will insert an element to the end of the queue. DQ. DQ will remove an element from the beginning of the queue. Is empty. Is empty will check if the queue is empty. Front. And the front will return the front item from the queue. Rare. Rare will return the last item from the queue.
All right, so coming to the next one, what is a tree data structure? A tree is a nonlinear hierarchical data structure consisting of nodes which are connected to one another by edges. Now nodes in a tree contain data items. Since trees being a nonlinear data structure, it provides quicker and easier access to data items as compared to linear data structures. Now coming to the next question, define the basic terminology in tree data structure. And the first one is edge. Edge is a connection between two nodes. Next is parent node. The node which is predecessor of a node is known as a parent node. Now here node 6 is a parent node. Next one is child node. The node which is successor of a node is called as a child node. Now here node 11 is a child node. Root node. The topmost node of a tree where it doesn't have any parent node is known as a root node. Now node 1 in this example is a root node. Leaf node. The nodes which do not have any child nodes are called leaf nodes. Node 7 in this example is a leaf node. Sibling node. Child nodes that have the same parent node are called siblings. For example, node 15 and node 16 are sibling. Degree of a node. The total number of subtrees attached to a node is known as degree of a node. For example, degree of the root node is 4 here. Height of a node. Height of a node is the number of edges from the node to its most distant leaf node. For example, height of the node 3 is 2. Height of a tree. Height of a tree is the height of the root node. For example, height of the tree here is 3. Depth of a node. It is the number of edges from the node to the root node. For example, depth of the node 7 is 2. Ok, so the next one is, what are binary trees? Binary trees are trees where each node has at most two child nodes. And the child node on the left is called as left child and the child node on the right is called as right child. Coming to the next one, what are tree traverses? What are its types? Traversing a tree means visiting every node in a tree. Unlike linear data structures, in trees there are many ways of visiting a node. Depending on the order we perform, there are two types of tree traversals. And the first one is depth first traversal. And second is breadth first traversal. Now let us try depth first traversal. Depth first search, that is DFS, is a recursive algorithm for traversing or searching all the vertices of a data structure such as trees or graphs. One starts at the root and search as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. Now here is the order in which the nodes are discovered in depth first search in a tree. Based on the order of visiting the nodes, DFS traversal can be divided into three types that is in-order traversal, pre-order traversal and post-order traversal. Now let's try to understand each of them. And the first one is in-order traversal. In this first visit all the nodes in the left subtree. Then visit the root node and then visit all the nodes in the right subtree. The next is pre-order traversal. And the steps we perform in this method are visit the root node first, visit all the nodes in the left subtree and then visit all the nodes in the right subtree. Next one is post order traversal and in this visit all the nodes in the left subtree then visit all the nodes in the right subtree and then visit the root node. Alright so coming to the breadth first traversal and this method traverses trees by labels instead of subtrees. First visit the root node then visit all the child nodes of the root node from left to right. 
and then go down all the levels in the same manner till we reach the leaf node. Alright, so coming to the next one, what is a binary search tree? A binary search tree is an ordered or sorted binary tree. Binary search trees allow us to maintain a sorted list of numbers to quickly search for a number. Now the rules for sorting the binary tree are as follows. And the first one is the value of the left child node is always less than the value of its parents node. And the second is the value of the right child node is always more than that of the value of its parent node. Now the next question is what is a full binary tree and complete binary tree? The full binary tree are binary trees where all the nodes have zero or two children. The complete binary tree are binary trees where all the labels are completely filled except the last label which is filled from the left to right and it is mandatory that the last leaf node must have a right sibling. Now the example is a complete binary tree because it is not full binary tree because node 3 doesn't have a right sibling. Now coming to the next one, what are B trees? B tree is a self-balancing search tree in which each node can have more than one key and can have more than two children. Since multiple keys are stored in a single node, the height of the tree is less compared to other trees such as binary search trees. And this decreasing height of the B trees allows for faster disk access. Now let us understand rules for creating B trees. In B trees, every node must be filled at least half before the creation of a new node. If the degree of a tree is M, then there must be at least M by 2 children before creation of a new node. Now root node can have minimum 2 children. And all leaf nodes must be at the same level. And the creation process of B trees is bottom up. Now the next question is what is a graph data structure? A graph is a non-linear data structure and consists of vertices and edges that connect the vertices. And the set of edges describes the relationship between the vertices. Okay, so coming to the last one, what is the difference between directed graph and undirected graph? In a directed graph, the edges that connect the vertices have a direction. And the direction of the edges represents the direction in which the graph can be traversed. And in an undirected graph, the edges of the graph doesn't have any direction and the edges can be traversed bidirectionally.